I'm Liz Rosenfeld. My film White Sands Crystal Foxes is part of the Forum Expanded program. Hello and welcome to the 36th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig and as you can see I cannot be in the Teddy studio right now because I'm at home in quarantine. But don't let that put you off. I have a yellow couch that is just about as beautiful <laughs> as the one they have in the studio. And now I'm very glad to have Liz Rosenfeld with me here in the chat, uh, in the video call. And um, we're going to talk about her beautiful film, White Sands Crystal Foxes. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for the film. I, um, like, like I, I told you earlier, I found it to be a very rich and, and very complex experience because you bring together all these different aspects. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's my opinion, obviously, but it, I found it to be a, a part poetry, part meditation on so many different topics on um, bodies, on, um, you know, kind of drawing as well from physics and geometry and and all that. Maybe you could give us um, your own idea of the film, um, if you like. Sure. Um, well, this film is the third work in um, about a seven year body of like what I consider to be research, although each piece in itself became quite a thing in the end, which is all um, explorations of themes and stories and characters and narratives that I would that I am um, exploring for what will be my first feature film that's called Foxes. Um, so the first two works were actually live performance pieces that I made for the stage that also incorporated. One incorporates elements of my video and film practice as well. Um, but this one, I wanted it to be a cinematic experience and I wanted to somehow think about what the intersection of my visual art practice, my film practice and my performance practice as an artist can all come into, how can it come into place in a moving image, like cinematic um, way. And so that's where my idea for creating a piece for a 360 immersive environment came from specifically for a planetarium. Um, was that I wanted to really find an intersection of all of those experiences that really speak to my work and all those mediums that really speak to my work and create a kind of narrative experience, or I'd say an experimental narrative experience that would affect the audience um, physically in a lot of different ways um, as they uh, watch the film itself. So that's the root of, of this film. It deals with a lot of different... Um, uh, questions relating to bodies in the face of um, environmental collapse, um, futures, a lot about the erotic body and the queer erotic body and how desire and intimacy is very much for me at the root of, well, it's at the root of all of my work, but how is that um, a political position? How is that a position of empowerment? Um, so these are themes that I'm dealing with in the film itself. Mm -hmm. And it, it is meant to be shown in an, a planetarium. That's what it's kind of is uh, is uh, meant for, and that that how it fits, I think, perfectly, especially with that kind of, as you said, three hundred sixty degrees experience. Um, could you maybe tell us what what you want, um, if that is actually possible to put it this way, but what you want people to take away from the film? Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting because I started shooting this film, um, of course, like so many, probably most projects in the Berlin Alley this year or many pre-pandemic. Um, and at the time, and it's something that I still want, but maybe is even more of a heightened desire for the exper experience of bodies in a different kind of space close together. This idea that I think there's a line in the film that says like, the tension is so intense, something along the lines of the tension is so intense that if one of these bodies were to move, the energy of the room would like completely collapse. Yeah. Um, and so I want people to feel like as a viewer, as an audience member, they need to be in that space, in that moment, 
to not just experience the film, but that the film can't exist without them Mm -hmm. um, as as key elements to the experience and the journey of that narrative. Um, So that's what I was thinking about, um, again, in terms of this kind of like immersive, performative, live experience of a planetarium. It's it's also um, designed to be a 2D installation where it's projected on a ceiling so that it Mm -hmm. also has this kind of like um, same immersive uh, feeling where people can lay on the floor together. And I did a lot of... um, I did a lot of uh, studying about like ceiling paintings and um, my editor and I looked at a lot of like Baroque images of ceiling paintings and like very kind of like erotic bathhouse lush, um, you know, uh, um, kind of like nature scenes of people like um, how they were like a potentially, maybe not even intentionally, but this kind of sense of like the divine and the eroticism of bodies in relationship to nature. But I really didn't want this to be like an eco-sexual feminist film. Not that I have a problem with the term eco-feminism or eco-sexuality, but for me, this is really about asking ourselves when we have exhausted the sustain what we consider as humans what we consider to be sustainable resources um in terms of like nature and natural resources what if like what would it be in a future where actually the human like humans are called on themselves as the material that is the like sustainable material um in service to nature rather than the opposite um And sort of this question of what is this instinct of humanity to have to survive everything without it becoming this like apocalyptic nihilistic narrative, which is what the feature film I want to make is actually also looking at from a kind of queer position. Yeah, and I found that that uh, actually shows really well kind of in in the film. At at times it gives you a very dystopic kind of feel. At times it is very hopeful, very, very tender as well. And you, I found that you have sort of almost like um, actors in it, in, in in terms that, you know, you have the the crystal foxes, you have the dancing, you have um, the white sands. Yes, um, non-human protagonists, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you could you tell us maybe what what the idea was behind um, giving a certain part of the narrative to those sort of uh, protagonists? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, So this film really unfolded over the course of uh, five years, the short film. And a lot of it was about me asking the questions why. So I finished writing, co-writing the script for Foxes with um, my co-writer, Thais Skizuzola, who lives in Brazil um, in 2016 is the first draft of the screenplay for Foxes. And then I really wanted to take my time and sort of like ask myself questions. Why do I want to make this film? What is it bringing? What is it asking? Um, And part of that was to go and travel to these places and kind of meet in a way, as I said, these non-human protagonists um, that were related to the themes that I'm interested in and the stories that I'm interested in. Um, so really it was like a big journey. Um, one, uh, so one of the places is White Sands in, um, New Mexico in the United States, which is, which is where the first atomic bomb was tested. Um, and I spent the di- two days there with my sister on this like epic road trip that we took across the Southwest. And I didn't even think it was going to become part of the narrative of this short film, um, but I was so taken by those images that, um, in fact, I shot most of the images from that <laughs> scene on my phone at the time because yeah. I didn't actually like think that it was going to resonate with me so intensely in terms of the history and the political resonance and also even the physicality of sitting in those sands and feeling them on my skin. Um, knowing that, you know, we're really close to like a very, one of the highest like radioactive sites in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. And then learning about what happened to those sands when they were 
came in contact with the atomic bomb and how they turned into, um, you know, this like green screen, like jade green. Um, so I became interested in kind of like the idea of like a chemical reaction as also like in a way, like another protagonist, which is also very much a part of foxes. Um, part of the narrative of foxes is that humans uh, produce these crystals from their bodies as a, actually as the result of a virus mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that um, is, and these crystals, rather than this virus being a kind of like a, a deathly virus, what these crystals are is they are um, thought to be the most like valuable energy um, that one can produce in the world and potentially solve this energy crisis. Mm -hmm. So that was one way that I was sort of like in this very kind of layered, nonlinear way, looking at how um, the human, you know, how me, the in, in particular, coming in contact with these different materials reacted. And yeah. Yeah. So that's that, one uh, example. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, um, I think that's, that's also kind of in the, in the beginning, there's a lot of, um, bringing that in with the, the caustic pulp and mm -hmm. that that kind of that seemed to be uh or it, it seemed to me that that would be part of a larger picture um in in the feature film um, yeah. is there is there certain um ideas or well by by shooting white sands crystal foxes did you come up with different ideas for the feature film or is it did you have certain ideas where you just kind of found like, okay, that's maybe that's not working out or? Um, I think for me, again, as like a person who is really based and is very much rooted in body based practice, um, whether it's in my own like physical performance work or cinematic moving image work or visual art, I really feel that like the, the topic of material is huge. And I often like approach like flesh and molecules and fat and like the substances that make up the body as one of the key materials of my work across all those mediums. So I think this film really, really speaks to that. And um, as I got deeper and deeper into it, certainly it, it just uh, makes me reflect on the narrative of foxes even further. Um, and, you know, I'd say we have like one more iteration of the script to go through. And, and some of that is to like heighten this relationship of human to different kinds of materials um, and how humans are um, in this kind of near, not so distant future, really um, how they have to like interact and navigate different materials of nature, of chemical, um, rather than conquer, but ra but more like submit to them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, certainly that was a big part of it. Another element we, we um, my cinematographer and I, Imogen Heath, who's also a collaborator of mine um, in other projects, we were able to travel to Japan where there's this like Fox conservatory um, on the side of a mountain. It was really incredible. And it was like the closest place I could find where we would be able to get really, really close to a lot of foxes. Yeah. And, um, and it was really like we were in their house. They weren't in our house, so to speak. <laughs> we showed up and they were, we were at their mercy. You know, they were like chewing on the tripod and the edge of our pants and you're only <laughs> allowed to like walk in certain parts of the, of the, it's not really a park. I don't know how to explain it. Just the, the area. And um, we really got to observe them and like be with them. And, um, and again, this idea of like, we had to submit to them really. Um, and that was super important. I think to the future of foxes itself, because it made me think about how maybe, you know, I had all these ideas of like how foxes come in and out of different scenes is kind of like, in a way they are the like background main protagonists of, of the film, but they, they are the metaphors. And I even wonder if they need to be seen at all. You know, questions like this have come up to, for me through making White Sands Crystal Foxes is like, how am I gonna work with, with these elements in the future? Mm -hmm. Have you have you come to any conclusion on that? I mean, is there is there 
Um, like, yes. I don't know well, yet. If you, if you I, wanted to. <laughs> I, I'm kind of leaning towards not seeing foxes at all in the end. Um, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. I mean, another element that I'm thinking about changing is so another kind of like dream part of, of Fox's The Future is that I really wanted to make a queer coming of age story that I always wanted to see myself that was about, um, you know, someone that I could personally see a reflection of myself and my community in. Um, and in White Sands Crystal Foxes, the performer that I invited to be in the film, um, Phoebe Patey Ferguson is um, somebody who is also um, very connected to my work. She's a academic in the UK who writes about queer performance and feminist performance. She's a professor and she's also, a, I don't know if she would explicitly identify as a performer, but I have seen her perform many times and she's a wonderful performer and a beautiful dancer. And she is also simultaneously writing a lot about my work. And so we also have a very close connection and I wanted her to be a part of this because we've been in a lot of different processes together over the years. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really exciting that she was able to be the main human body in this yeah. short film. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about um, how the two of you interacted to kind of craft those scenes? Because I found it mm. like the, the sort of, you know, let's call it human scenes in, in the film are very, very interesting. Um, also in the sense of what place they have in, in the sort of narrative. So certainly I considered, since this was kind of like an experimental study of all of these questions and themes and stories that I'm looking at, I was thinking a lot about this as like my daydream. Um, and so that's really the, the um, point at which I started in the direction with Phoebe was that like I wanted this character to think about their, you know, their dreams outside of their reality, even like outside of their bedroom, you know, outside of their mind. And that all of the kind of outdoor scenes, which are related very much to questions of cruising, which comes up a lot in my work in the last 20 years, questions of queer sexuality, of physicality, how um, we would be like kind of enacting those encounters um, but definitely from a place of like projection and fantasy and desire. Um, so that was a main, a kind of like main um, direction. And we also worked, we shot in my bedroom, we shot in the forest, and we also shot um, in a green screen studio, um, which, you know, all three are really great kind of like examples of this kind of sense of like suspended space and time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I found this um, to be to be very interesting, kind of that that, that kind of, in a way, counterpoint um, to uh, the, the scenes in the film where there's a lot of um, you know uh, a lot of meditation on other issues, and then kind of seeing that very beautiful, very bodily performance that kind of uh, gives you a different aspect of what the film is 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 saying, right? I think also I want people to experience like erotic joy and a lot of like sensory overload and um, that we can think about apocalyptic future. I mean, especially now, like what does it mean to think about a kind of apocalyptic future where, um, you know, like, yes, it's, 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 this is a complicated statement because like it has a lot of, it assumes a lot of privilege what I'm going to say, but I also did think like, I was sick of seeing queer narratives that dealt with sickness, illness, viruses, and also specifically only related to the future of like cis gay men. Um, and that's very much where like my desire for exploring a kind of like, you know, a, a, a to say a positive approach to the apocalypse is, I don't know, it, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth but a kind of like apocalyptic future where we have to live through it, you know? Yeah. And specifically from a queer position, we, we have been living 
through it. We have been living through our own sicknesses and viruses and stigmatizations and murders and etc. And so how what does a kind of like coming of age future look like for queer people where um, different elements of that are positioned in like a more kind of like science fiction, you know, way somehow like the crystals become these secrets they become these powers they become you know um yeah it's it's like instead of death it becomes something else yeah i also found that it's that that was kind of the ideas of the film that you look at the future with a sort of peace of mind even um by, by kind of submitting yourself to to what is going to happen Definitely. And I think, you know, when the pandemic um, happened and my my co-writer, Thais, and I had a lot of, you know, she wrote to me from um, Sao Paulo where she lives and she said, you know, this is really uncanny that we wrote this film just a few years ago about a virus. And here we are. And even though it's a completely different global situation with a with obviously like a very different reality, there was something that we were both really struck by in some of the decisions that we made in the screenplay of Foxes. Um, and she said, I think now is the time for us to think about coming back to this and making it. And this is two years ago, of course, now. And I was like, no, I actually really need to understand if this film is appropriate and like holds a responsible place in this discussion. But as the pandemic has unfolded, actually more and more people have been encouraging me to go back to it. And I think now with, with the um, amazing reception to the, you know, kind of short experimental exploration of Foxes, which will be premiering White Sands Crystal Foxes next week, I'm feeling more really open to that discussion of it and like, what is our relationship to a virus? You know, how is a virus a protagonist in our daily lives now? Mm -hmm. Not that viruses were not, but, yeah. um, you know, on a global scale, um, it's become, even though it's still, as we all know, it's like wildly different in every part of the world based on all of the reasons that we know, it's still a different, it's a, it's a shifted discussion now. It's a shifted experience. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, viruses have sort of come from, from, from the sidelines to being the main protagonists and some of the stories that we tell. Yeah. Mm. Well, Liz, thank you so much for this interview. It has been a real pleasure. Thank and you. Um, I wish you all the best with white sands, crystal foxes. And I, very much hope you have a lot of fun um, showing it at the Bellinale. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. And mm -hmm. thanks for the discussion. <laughs> Thank you.